Welcome back. You're watching the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. XL bully dog owners are resorting to extreme lengths to circumvent a recent ban on the breed in England and Wales, in some cases sending their pets hundreds of miles to Scotland where the dogs are still actually legal. But as Oliver Whitfield Mircic reports, the animal's futures north of the border will only be a temporary fix. Good boy. Meet Phil Gregory an XL bully owner who travels any distance for the now outlawed dogs blamed for the deaths of at least 23 people. When the ban came into force in England and Wales, it became illegal to have an XL bully in public without a lead and muzzle. It's also against the law to sell, breed or give the dogs away. A lot of the dogs I'm, I'm getting are actually coming from breeders that know there's no money left in it and they're either dumping them or putting them to sleep. But in Scotland, a loophole emerged when the devolved government originally said it wasn't planning on a ban. So on Boxing Day, Phil made the first of more than 40 trips up north to rehome dogs. Hello. When I go to Scotland, it's like a round trip, about 700 miles. And I've, I've done that so many times, so at least 20,000 miles. A Scotland run is like 250 pounds. I think I've spent over 4,000 pounds so far, I think. Now, the Scottish government has had a change of heart and will replicate the ban in England and Wales, in part because of the influx in arrivals. Mike Flynn is the chief superintendent of the Scottish SPCA. What is your message to those people who are driving to Scotland with XL bully dogs? My simple message would be don't, because we're going to end up with the same laws up here. If the owners in England and Wales are so concerned, I think they've still got about a week left to um, apply for an exemption. Apply for it, pl uh, comply with the conditions, and you can keep your dog. Phil concedes that when the breed is fully banned in Scotland, his journeys might have to be made in reverse or even abroad. Yet that won't stop him. Just look at this. That's that's what motivates you. The beautiful. I just got. I just need to keep going. Undeterred, he once again loads an XL bully into his car for a 10-hour round trip to Lockerbie before the Scottish ban begins. Oliver Whitfield Mircic, Talk TV. Joining me tonight, we've got dog behaviourist Hannah Malloy. Hello, Hannah, how are you? Hello, Mike, I'm all right, how are you? Very well indeed. It's a strange uh, situation, this, isn't it? Because you've got people in Scotland who apparently are able to own this dog, able to have a sort of any um, a permutation of, of an XL bully, which a lot of them seem to be anyway, um, and yet, you know, just across a sort of fictitious border, um, if you take one over that border, uh, you could be in trouble. That's it. We're in a really weird period of time where it is illegal to own one in one half uh, of this, well, in England, and, and it's not illegal to own one in Scotland. Um, and I completely understand why we're seeing this situation play out. People are desperate to do anything they can to save these dogs' lives. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, there are still loads of attacks and it does seem that Scotland is going to go the same way as England and decide to bring the ban in in Scotland. And I can kind of understand why it would be a weird loophole to have a large part um, of an island mm. that was OK with the ban and the other half of the island not OK with the ban. But it's yeah, it's, it's a really difficult situation. Uh, rehoming a dog is not something that should be done lightly Um rehoming should have lots of checks and processes put in place to make sure that people who are taking on a dog are ready to do that, are the right person. So this kind of sort of desperate rehoming attempt um, is likely to, to go a little bit wrong when done at speed. Well, that's the trouble, isn't it? And, I mean, was it done at speed? I mean, the trouble is, I suppose, um, those who made the, the, the law would say, well, if we hadn't done it at speed, people would have said, well, why didn't you do it quicker? Yeah, it's true. I mean, I would say that the law absolutely has been a knee-jerk reaction, but equally I appreciate we are currently living in an era where we have dogs that have both the capacity and the tenacity to do serious damage to humans. Mm. I would argue as an animal behaviourist that that is because of the way those dogs have been raised and treated, but I'm not denying that they have the physical ability to, to really harm people, and that's mm. something that we need to, as a country, uh, do a lot more to safeguard against. Yes. The other problem I have, though, is the media is not picking up on all of the other dog attacks, and it isn't just dogs who look like this who are right. attacking humans at the moment, and that's really important no. too. 
I think that's a problem. I mean, I was told a story, I think, a week or two ago about an attack that happened up in Manchester uh, of an Alsatian, I think it was, that attacked somebody's smaller dog and basically killed the dog. And the police came yeah. along, shot the Alsatian, who until that moment had been relatively calm and, and, and normal and, and a very good pet. And, and obviously the, the, the both owners were absolutely distraught because it was a horrible scene and it all went on in the daytime in public on a sort of public street. Absolutely. And dog-on-dog attacks are even more nuanced and complicated than dog-on-human attacks. We have a pretty strong line when it comes to dogs attacking people. Mm. That's just not OK. Right. Dogs attacking dogs is much more complicated. Right. We have to understand their language um, to be able to really understand what happens between uh, dog-on-dog attacks. If a dog kills another dog, though, uh, I do think there needs to be better measures. And there was a story just the other day of a golden retriever um, who mauled a child at a birthday party. Right. So, you know, it isn't just dogs like XL bullies, although I appreciate um, that they can do a lot more damage yeah. than other breeds. And what happened to that type. golden retriever? Was that destroyed as well? Yeah, I believe so. And, I, you know, and this is the difficulty is we don't get to see all of the other... We don't get to see the whole spectrum of what's happening in the UK. Right. And my concern is that if we continue focusing on the XL bully and, and everything that owners who have dogs that look like this are currently... They're stressing out. They've got a week. Mm. If you think that your dog is an XL bully type, you have just one week uh, to get it on the exemption scheme. Or someone could you know, point at your dog and say, I think that's an XL yeah. bully and the police could come around. So there's tens of thousands of people in the UK right now who are stressing out yeah. because they're worrying that their best friend might be considered an XL or a pit bull. Right. Um, but and that's so... another weird thing, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, who is going to come around? Who will knock on the door? Who will be responsible for sort of policing all of this if you have got a dog that is thought to be uh, in breach of this new rule? I mean, up in Scotland, it was just on Tuesday, I think, um, there was a man taken to hospital with serious injuries, uh, a large bulldog-type dog, but it was not yet known whether it was an XL bully, and that was shot as well. Yeah, and that had been brought up from England, actually, yeah. I believe. That dog was one of those quick rehomes, and this is the problem. If you rescue a dog, um, we always say with rescue, three days, three weeks, three months. These are our timing points. So when you get a dog home, within three days, it knows its environment. Within three weeks, it knows you. And within three months, you know it. Right. OK, so there's just not enough time. We're not giving dogs enough time to settle in, to get to know their caregivers. Um, and in this case, this gentleman had taken on a dog he who was brought up because of the ban mm. um, and was horribly attacked by it uh, within a week of owning it. So, you know, we really just need to be so much more careful um, when it comes to rehoming and training dogs, absolutely. And I would say across the board, mm. I want to see a dog licence come in. You've heard me say it before, Mike, and I will say it again. We need dog licensing across the board for all dogs. We yeah. need much higher standards of training so that I could, you know, turn to a dog and, and say, listen, can you call your dog for me? Yeah. If you can't call your dog within three calls and have it come immediately back, then you're going to lose the uh, the licence to have your dog off lead. Yes. You know, things like this are going to totally change the landscape of Great Britain if we would just step in and do do all of the dogs. <laughs> yeah. We don't want them all on the muzzles. I don't think that's necessary, but we can have much higher standards of training across the yeah, board. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, the difficulty with all of these types of situations, you know, it's like people who break the law as a reg on a regular basis. If horrible people own dogs, the dogs are likely to be badly behaved and badly trained and possibly dangerous. But those horrible people will remain horrible and they probably will never really change. You know, the same as people who drive without insurance, the same as people who are going to break into your house. You can keep warning them that they're doing something against the law, but are they really going to stop doing it? And this is where we need much better strategies um, for talking to people who fall into that category. I was speaking to a dog licensing officer the other day and this particular person said to me, honey, you know, the people that I meet who have the dogs that I'm trying to keep away from the public, these are people who would take a puppy and go and get it put down to claim the 200 quid from the right. government, you know. And so there's, there are so many wonderfully responsible dog owners out there and there is a huge contingent of people who honestly are living in poverty. Mm. 
and social poverty and uh, emotional poverty don't have any sense of responsibility towards their community we really need to be thinking of much more novel strategies uh, to help people like this look after dogs well uh, or just not be getting given them in the first place right. you right. know it's not okay exactly um, but as you say i mean i know it's a slightly bigger problem but those communities where a lot of those people live have got big problems huge problems that need to be addressed as well and the dogs are just part of it really but hannah listen great to talk to you thanks very much indeed uh, hannah malloy their dog behavior is saying you know it's not going to be that simple. Nobody really knows. I mean, are you actually going to be expecting to report somebody as having an XL bully dog and expect somebody to turn up the next day to take it away? Really?